Um, let me answer this one. You say you move from the right to the left. One thing I don't understand is why people seem to jump from one extreme to another. Why, uh, hold on. Why do people tend to move from the far right to the far left? Why no chill time in the center? I was a communist who moved right, but only as far as liberalism. Um, that's, I think that's a misconception. I think that people, um, I think that people, uh, claim that that's the case, but that's not always the case. Um, I spent like my life, like, I actually graphed it once in an old conversation. I graphed where I moved on the on the 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 timeline and what the approximate like p dates were, and it was over the course of like fifteen years from when I actually started figuring out my Christian viewpoints to when I was a libertarian Christian, aka an anti-church Christian, an anti-organized religion Christian. Then I, I slowly moved away from that into being an, an agnostic atheist. And then slowly I was a progressive liberal from that position. And then I had a, a slow period of, sl of getting slightly more right, where um, I was really critical of certain things and i was really worried and i said well you know maybe i was maybe i was a little bit much here and then i realized oh hold on a second can i give us can i give you a timeline yeah here why not this will be a bonus this is a preview for everybody here's a little preview for everybody i'll draw hold on there's actually an image um hold on a second i'm gonna find this thing real quick here we go. Hold on. Let's there's a there's a thing here. Yeah, here's the one. Here we go. This is the one. Here we go. Let me do this. Here, let me let me do this. We're going to do we're going to do something fun. You guys are going to love this shit. This is going to be really fun. Watch this. This is going to be really fun. I promise you you'll find this fun. I did this a long time ago, but it's literally been uh, a year since I did this. This was on one of my early streams. So let's do this again. Let's do this little exercise again and I'll illustrate. And I think this will be useful for people. And then I can conclude with some cool shit. So hold on a second. Let me open this with Krita. Yeah, let's do, no, let's do GIMP. Let's do GIMP. Yeah, this will be fun. Oh, the commands aren't working. Oh, there we go. Oh, that still has the... Yeah, there we go. All right. Here we go. Let's zoom on in here. All right. Let's see. Whoop, whoop, whoopsies. That's not correct. How do I... How do you do this? Okay, this is fine. Yeah, here we go. Wait. Why is it... Uh, How do I... Give me just a second. Give me just a second. I'll get it up on the screen. Hold on. Okay. Huh. It's weird. Here. We've got to zoom out one. Okay, here we go. All right. Let's grab our little pen here. We're going to get it. Let's see. Is that good? All righty. Here we go, everybody. This is it. This is the ideology chart. Okay. Oh, oh, uh, Ar Argo, what did you want to talk about? Sorry, I, I wasn't doing, like, completely open call-ins. I'm, I'm totally cool to talk, but um, I just didn't know what you wanted to talk about. I didn't realize. Sorry. So here's this, right? Here we go. Yeah, this is the chart. This is the meme chart. I did this once before on stream, okay? All right. So I'm going to show you where I started and where I moved over the years. And I'll give you approximate time. I'll, I'll get you, give you approximate time, uh, uh, time periods. Okay. So let's start with, uh, let's start with where I would say around 15. Okay. Because that was somewhere in the ballpark of where I was starting to figure out my own political ideology. When I was a kid, whatever i just took you know i i thought about stuff i like to think you know i i was a, a thoughtful kid but i didn't have any big ideas yet i was just thinking about christianity because that's all i knew but i started right here when i first started my political journey it was right here i started here okay at the theocrat i literally no you can't see a picture of me no way not gonna happen i believed 
that God, that the best form of government would be a basically a religious monarchy, that a God, God picking a righteous king would be the best world that you could live in. Yeah. Now, just so you know, this was my dad, by the way, up here. My dad was somewhere between these two. Okay. Just so you're just so you know, this is where my dad was. And my mom would be like this one, tr the boomer, the boomer would have been my mom. Okay. So this was me at like 15. So we're going to put 15 right here. Okay. So as I went through high school, I moved over from being a theocrat to being a conservative. See? So I moved technically slightly right. And this would have been at like 16, 17, I would have been in this area. So we'll put 17 for now. Okay. Then um, I would have gotten into like senior year and I started to move. Um, I was still very uh, sort of like right wing, but uh, as I like, as I, hit 18 and I left the home, I was becoming slightly less extreme and I went to college. And when I was in college, I came into contact with a lot of different people. When I was in college, I met people from all over the world. Uh, I met literally people, like, I'm not kidding you. I lived in an international housing, a housing, um, thing. And, and I met people from all over the world, people who just were learning English. There was, it was wild. It was really amazing. And I learned so much stuff. It's, it's not, it was a dorm, but it was like a block. Like there was like, we had control of the entire dorm and everybody and our house was specifically designed to meet international students. It wasn't a frat. Yeah. It was a dorm unit, but it was a special dorm. It was a special dorm that was called, it was devoted to meeting international students. Okay. Yeah, it was no frat. Anyway, I would have joined us. Well, whatever. It doesn't matter. So I met a lot of people. And at that point, I moved. I started moving this way. And I made a, a relatively speedy move over to here at about 19, where I became a liberal and I had started to buy into, um, yeah, I had to sign up for it. Yeah, I did. Yes, I did. I did have to sign up for it and I had to do an application and all kinds of stuff. It was wild. It was really cool. Um, you, it was a really unique thing. Most schools don't have something like this. It was one of the best experiences of my life. Um, it was great by the way. Um, but yeah, I moved from being a conservative relatively quickly. It was like over the course of, of, um, of, of like two years or so, or three years, it's kind of hard to tell. And this was because I met people from all over the world. And I realized that the conservative ideology, no, I am, I am 30 cinnamon Rowell. No, no drugs were involved in this. I was completely, uh, completely straight edge. I did not even have alcohol at all. I had no alcohol. I never drank. I never smoked. I never did anything. No drugs, no sex whatsoever until I was 21 at least. So no, there was no drugs involved in this. Um, but meeting people, yeah, I wasn't a punk. I was, I was a conservative. I was a conservative kid. Like I was, I wanted to become a pastor. Yes. The international students was huge. Let me explain real quick. When I met, I met in the course of a couple of, no, I'm actually 30. I'm, I'm actually 30. Why am I on Twitch? Because YouTube went down. Sounds like I am easily influenced. That's not true at all. Um, uh, that's really funny. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, let's see here. What the fuck was I going to say? Um, I can't remember what I was going to say. Um, chat is, is distracting me, but that's okay. Everybody chat, keep distracting me. So yes, when I, when I went to the international house, um, I met people who were Muslim. I met a bunch of people who were Hindu, Hinduists. I met a bunch of atheists. I met Buddhists all in the same year. 
all like all of a sudden I went from living all around just Christians for most of my life. I met people who came from so many different backgrounds. And I remember the second night that I was in the international house, the second night that I was there, there was a big gathering in like just a, an organic gathering. A bunch of people were looking to meet friends and everybody was hanging out and people brought stuff that their parents had given them from their home. So we were eating instant noodles from India. We were trying Indian Coke. I was trying uh, African snacks. I was sharing my American snacks. It was literally just people sitting around and um, no, no cocaine. Uh, this person's getting blasted out of chat. You're annoying the fuck out of me. Get the fuck out of here, you stupid bitch. Um, there we go. Um, yeah, no, not Indian cocaine. Like Coke. Like it was called Thumbs Up. Has anybody ever heard of Thumbs Up? Let me show you. Here, let me show you. Indians in chat are going to know what I'm talking about. It's called Thumbs Up. Here we go. I'm going to show it to you. Ready? It's right here. This is it. This is the stuff. Thumbs up. That's it. This is the stuff right here. There we go. So, um, yeah, and I tried that. Ha <laughs> uh ha. -huh, yes. Ha uh ha. -huh, Coke. Yes. It's Coca-Cola, you fools. So, I kind of became a liberal. And the reason for this um, was that... I realized that Christians weren't the only people in the world, that there were people with very different backgrounds and that they could get along. And I was still a Christian, but I was a Christian liberal at this point because I realized, oh my God, like the number of perspectives in the world is so different. And I realized that the conservative views that I'd had were totally ridiculous in comparison um, to... Uh, in comparison to what I was learning very quickly. And I was thinking a lot. Like, by the way, this wasn't like a light process. I was still, when I was a conservative, I was very argumentative. Um, and the uh, I was very argumentative, and that continued. One of the first nights I was there, I had an argument about religion with an atheist, two Muslims, three Hinduists, and an, uh, myself, and an ex-Catholic. Like seven people all arguing about religion and it was wild. It was a wild learning experience and it gave, and I would take journals notes and I would think about this stuff. It was very, very wonderful experience. Um, it was very, very intense. And um, interestingly, I found myself, one of the interesting things was I found myself on the side of Muslims against an atheist. Very weird. That was a very weird experience. I, as a Christian, an extreme Christian, I was not trans um, yet. I didn't know. Well, I was trans, but I didn't know that I was trans. Oh, okay. We can maybe talk about that afterwards, Argo. Argo. I, I really want to have some time with just the stream because I've been doing a lot of call-ins today. Um, so I'm just going to do some solo stuff for a little bit. But thank you. And, and I'd be totally down to have that conversation in the future. Um, so I found myself on the side of... Muslims. And I never would have thought that was the case when I was a, a conservative. So the conservative part, did they know I was trans? No, no one did. I didn't know I was trans. No, no. Um, so, um, what was I saying? Yes. So anyway, the point is I moved from the conservative positions and I moved. Yes, I know we're going to watch that HMD. Don't worry. Um, the, I went from the theocrat at, at a young age to a conservative, and then I slowly moved over to liberal. Now, I stayed here for some time, okay? Like, I was right here for some time. And I moved a very, very tiny, tiny bit between the environmentalism and progressivism. I moved around here for a little while, um, and I ended up more or less over here by, uh, you know, by, do I have, when did I come out as a mama and do I have kids? Listen, I'm 30 now. I don't have personal kids, but I have a lot of imps. Okay. 
Um, is this Merkel? Yeah, this is the Merkel thing. Okay. I don't, I don't have kids, but I have a whole lot of imps. Okay. So this was where I, I moved around between this spot. Now, by the way, um, just so I, I, um, what's an imp? Well, people who like my content, who join and follow me are of my imps because I'm demon mama. Yeah. So if you want to be an imp, you can be too. Anyway. Um, yeah, you can be an imp. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome, Kid Cory. Happy to have you. Um, yeah. See, it's pretty cool. Imps for life. True. Um, I give you the noms. Yep. So, uh, when I was like at this point, another thing that really influenced me when I was in, um, college was I learned a lot about the environment and I learned a lot ab about progressivism. And when I, when I say that I moved around this area here, it's because I, I had sort of accepted that conservatism wasn't the thing. And I started learning about the environment. Um, I was a film major. Um, yeah, I was a film major, but I took a bunch of classes about um, nature and about, and I read, I ended up reading um, Herman Hesse's, uh, what's it called? Um, Herman Hesse's, uh, what's it called? Fuck, I can't think of the name of it. The Buddha. What's his name? Siddhartha. Um, Siddhartha? Um, yeah, I read Siddhartha. Uh, I ended up reading, um, I ended up watching a fuckload of documentaries. I ended up going and doing a bunch of stuff in nature. And I realized that the ideology that I grew up in was incredibly careless to the environment. And I didn't realize that before because I hadn't known anything else. Um, so I learned during college over a number of courses and talking to people and meeting people that the environment had been ravaged in a way that I didn't really, um, that I didn't really know. So even though I had loved nature as a kid, I didn't realize how the ideology I grew up with affected nature until I got to college. And so that pushed me into this area where I hovered between an environmentalist and a progressive. It was very important to me, and it still is, by the way. Environmentalism was very important to me. So this would have been around the age of, let's see. I floated in this area for about, until I was about 24. Somewhere within this sphere until I was about 24. Now, when I was 21... No, when I was 20, sorry, when I was 20, I found out that I was trans. It's very complicated. I'll talk about that another time. Um, the ideology I grew up in taught that, um, that humans had dominion over the earth and could use it um, basically however they wanted. Well, maybe, maybe it is a part, it's not really that I want to overlook it. It's just that... Um, Yes, I did realize this. By the way, Mayday, just so you know, that's a really good question. Did, uh, Mayday asks, did you realize how much your political ideologies were changing at the time? Yes, I did. And I actually have letters to my dad that I wrote talking about what I was learning about the environment. Um, I have emails with my family. Wait, wait, I'm not, no, wait, Spaceway, I know, hold on. I promise you I've embraced being trans, don't you worry. I promise you I have. I just, it's not really relevant to the, the the conversation we're having right now. But I can talk about it nonetheless because people seem interested in it. So, um, I did realize this. And I wrote letters to my family, my dad especially, and my cousins um, that about what I was thinking about, what I was learning. Um, no, unfortunately, Kid Corey. I mean, I tried to. They did not. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um... We'll talk about that. Um, and uh, so while I was moving between the age of 19 and 24, I was moving through here and I was thinking about, I was dealing with me being trans. When I came out as trans, it was catastrophic. My dad uh, pulled all support for me. So I had to leave college. Um, I had to drop out of college. And I had to go back home. My parents made me go to a Christian counselor. Um, I was then kicked out of my house when my parents found that I had um, 
that I had a secret stash of lipstick. Um, and I became, I had to live with my friend and, um, and when I came out, it was a big deal because it, it also coincided with me becoming an atheist because I realized the only thing that let me accept that I was trans was when I acknowledged, um, was when I acknowledged that I no longer believed in religion. And these things happened very close to one another. Um, so what basically happened is I had a friend, very, very close friend who helped me get away from extremist religion. And they were willing, this is the friend I've mentioned many, many times. This friend opened up to me about being trans. And I was like, I feel the same way. And we ended up talking about it extensively. And we realized that part of the reason why we had so much affinity was because we both had unsolved gender issues. Yeah. <laughs> oh, when I said, ah, yeah, motherfucking trans rights. True. Um, yeah. Um, so there was this whole process whereby I started to realize that I was having gender issues, um, that I was having gender issues, but I couldn't come to terms with them until I realized that I no longer believed in religion. Um, uh, and that was a tough one, but basically what happened is I opened up to my mother and in confidence and at first it went well. Um, oh, it's okay. I'm okay with that, with that. Yeah. It, it's usually, listen, kid Corey, it's usually considered a little bit rude to ask that, but yes, I have. And I'll talk about that in the future. Don't worry. You didn't offend me. I'm very, don't worry. I understand you're not coming from a bad area. I can talk about that a little in a little bit, but first I want to finish this story. Um, yeah, obviously, generally that's a little bit, you know, that's a little bit personal, but I'm the type of person who's okay with that. Most people, please be careful about that type of thing. Um, one second. I understand. Well, I'll give you information afterwards. Um, Yes. So, um, at this point, things went bad. My mom broke confidence, told my dad, and my dad freaked out. Um, my dad disclosed against my will to most of my family. Um, and, uh, and disclosed to most of my family. We had a terrible, terrible disagreement. It was, it was ridiculous. I literally, I found these files, by the way, the other day, um, I, I found these files. I have still the, I made like four um, PowerPoint presenta presentations to give to my dad to explain everything, to try and explain everything. And it didn't work. It didn't matter. It, it literally didn't matter. Um, unfortunately, what ended up happening was my dad cut all of my support, uh, cut my cell phone, cut my, my, my bank account that was shared I had nothing and I had to return back to live with my, um, no, I didn't tell them in a PowerPoint. I, uh, I tried to use a PowerPoint to teach my dad, like to share with my dad. Um, I, I tried to, to share that information. He found out because people told him and then he made a whole bunch of conclusions. And then I tried to tell him and I had this PowerPoint so I could teach him stuff and it didn't matter. It didn't matter. He was very angry. He cut me off completely. I had to return to go back and live with my mom. Um, my mom was super, super poor. Um, and I lived, I had to move in because I had nothing. And I went from having a career in film to having to leave and go back home. And, uh, and, and I had, and then my parents pressured me into going to a Christian therapist and it was really bad. Uh, and a bunch of shit happened this entire time. Um, I moved around in this area 
I stayed in this area for a really long time. I was moving between like a um a environmentalist and a progressive and I had some libertarian leanings, but not this type of libertarian. I was always the more progressive type of libertarian. Even though I had some like weird free market ideas, it wasn't enough to bring me over to this side. I was just here. You know? Like this is where I was. I did believe some weird libertarian stuff, but that was more of just picking up some stuff. So, um, then whatever, what, yeah, like a social, yeah, social libertarian. Yes. That's basically the best way to describe it. I had been very influenced by, um, by Ayn Rand, which makes you think that like, um, which would make you think that like, uh, like I would be super, super, like that would make me go right wing, but it really didn't. Um, I, it was not very super coherent and I actually ended up deconverting my friend. The very friend who deconverted me from religion, I ended up deconverting that friend from objectivism. Kind of funny. Yeah. I, I had all these critiques of objectivism and I ended up deconverting the, the very friend who deconverted me from Christianity. I ended up con deconverting them from objectivism. Wild, wild shit. That, that debt settled, you know, karma settled. Um, but anyway, so I floated around here for a long time. Anyway, um, after this, I basically floated in this area for a really long time, a really long time. And, uh, and then when I was about 25 or so, Let's see. Yeah, when I was about 25 or so, a lot of stuff changed in my life. I went full-time, finally. I finally transitioned. I finally transitioned at 24, and I went full-time around early 2015. So that would have been when I was 25. And uh, full-time is when you, uh, when you start living as a woman all the time, basically. Uh... It's, nobody really calls it part-time, but a lot of times you will, with your friends, you will be female, but at your job, you have to still be boy mode. Yeah, so I went, that's what that usually means. There isn't, nobody really calls it part-time trans, but, um, but like, yeah, you live like a double life. It's very uncomfortable, and most people don't really live this type of life as much anymore because the reality, yeah, it's stealth. It's called stealth. Yeah. Um, anyway, I moved. I went old school style and I moved to a new place, went to a new school, restarted my life basically. And it was really, really tough. Um, but I more or less floated in this environmental environmentalist progressive sphere for a really, really long time. And then when I was 25, I was no longer in college again because I've been in college three times, but never finished it. That's just how life is because money is expensive. I started to move further left. And this, it started with Sam Cedar and Chapo. And then I got into uh, Vosh. And then I got into, um, and then I got into, well, Vosh was the primary influence. And then I got into a bunch of other lefty creators like Michael Brooks, like Antifada. Um, all kinds of stuff like that. And now you know me, which is right around this area here. Somewhere in this, in this sphere. Somewhere in this sphere here. And this is now 30. And there, there it goes. Started as a fucking theocrat. I mean, you could also put me over here because I was kind of a monarchist. But I was a theocrat. I had religious things. And then went to a conservative long trip over to this way. And then I got a lot smarter. And this was very liberating for me. What about the free market? No, I'm not really a free marketer. Uh, I, I think that free, free market stuff is mostly problematic. So this is where I am. Well, you, well, there's a lot of questions. Why the fuck is Bernie in the... Oh, because... Because he, because 85D2D Derek, I don't know if you know this, but America is kind of authoritarian. America is kind of authoritarian. Becoming the president of America still means be, being very much uh, authoritarian. But anyway, this is where I floated. So the idea 
that like people flip from one extreme to the other isn't really accurate. As you can see, I was here. Now, I would say that over the course of my life, over the course of 15 years, I, I guess I did go from one area to another, but I spent a lot of time in this middling, liberal, progressive area. Most of, most of my adult life was in this area. You know what I mean? You know, most of my adult life was in here. Yeah. And now I'm here and I don't really, I don't know. Maybe there's more, maybe there's more learning. Maybe someday I'll become this one. Maybe someday I'll move over here and become the this one. Yeah, it could be goddess trans girl. Oof. Yeah, we'll see. Probably not though. Um, but yeah, I'm very, I, I've found a lot of things to learn. Now I imagine there's all kinds of learning, but, uh, I, something that characterizes everything. Okay. Here's an interesting piece. When I was here, I was very grounded in my beliefs. When I was the theocrat conservative, I was very grounded in my beliefs down here. I wouldn't really consider myself super grounded in my beliefs, except for in progressivism. I was very progressive and very environmentalist, but I didn't really have a whole lot of core principles. And now I have core principles again, because it takes a long time to build those things after you go through severe, um, severe trauma from being outed as trans to your entire family and then kicked out and all that shit. So there you have it. There you have it. Um, yeah. So yeah, there you go. What ideas do you think you still hold from your past? Or did you build everything after your drift from conservatism? Well, there are, there are small beliefs, but none of the core beliefs really remain because those core beliefs were like the core beliefs when I was a conservative were, um, were very, very much centered on, um, on, uh, God. And once the, the God question fell, up, fell apart, it threw everything, a lot of things into doubt. Um, obviously, love was very, very important to me. Always has been, always will be. I, I believe love is very, very powerful, but I don't really see it as like a, 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 a magical force like I used to. Um, but, uh, th you know, that is something that's really um, important to me. Um, and... I'm trying to think of some of the other things that were super, super important to me at the time that might still remain. I mean, ambition and work ethic, those, again, aren't really, um, oh, yeah, no problem, Pinball Joe. Uh, hope you have a good time. Um, thanks for coming by, and don't don't forget to toss me a follow here and on YouTube. Pinball Joe, uh, I, I usually stream on YouTube, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the thing, like, fallible, imperfect beings, like, that has a different meaning to me now. Um, that has a very different meaning to me now. Um, I, I would have taken that to mean that everybody has original sin. Now I take it to mean that there isn't such a thing as perfected. There is no such thing as a perfect person. Um, that is, so I do believe that, but it's a different, it's a different understanding of it than I used to believe. This is really complicated. I'm going to go into all of this when I finally do my, um, my big spiritual deconstruction stream, but we'll get to that. Um, so, uh, what happened to the YouTube? Uh, YouTube was fucked up tonight. So yeah, it's definitely contextualized very different. Um, and yeah, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's been a, a, a big process, but one that has taken a lot of thought and the entire process has been, I've always been very deliberate. I've always journaled a lot. So I have years of journals talking about what I was thinking about, what I was learning about, what I was picking up. All that type of stuff. Um, I hope it's not F again. I hope it's not F. Um, yeah, it was a big journey. Um, so, yeah. But that was basically the process. And and the thing that you should take away from this is that um, you can learn a lot. If you just knew, if I went online onto Twitter and said, I used to be a a Christian dominionist theocrat, and now I'm not anymore. People might cancel me or something. 
But if you take the time to hear the story of how I came, how I came, how I was indoctrinated into these beliefs, how I grew and how I grew down to here to where I am now over the course of 15 years, approximately more than that, honestly, because I started thinking about Christianity when I was much younger, but I didn't know anything else. Um, you know, it, it, it takes on a different look. It, 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 it's important, you know, like understanding the shit's important. And yes, there are people who go from a Nazi to a tanky, to a Chinese communist, to a monarchist, to a traditionalist, to an ANCAP, to an ANCOM, back to a Trotskyist, into a feudalist, and then arrive back at a tanky again. Those people do exist. But that doesn't, that's not me, and that's not everyone. So I believe that there are probably people who have a similar journey like this that, that's just a different path. And we should try to understand that, you know? Try to understand that. 2016 was a big deal for me. That would have been right in this area. And that was where I started going left further because I realized that liberalism was failing, that it, that it had failed me, that there was a, 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 a fascist marching into the White House and that liberalism had, had, was failing. And I still believe that. 2016 was a moment for me of, of an awaken, another major awakening. You'll notice right around that era, right around 25, 26 was when I started going to the left. And that was because I realized the flaws with that, with, that I had in these beliefs. It was a slow process. I held these beliefs for a long time, but it was that I didn't realize like the principles of progressivism, the principles of environmentalism, the principles of libertarianism or liberal or or freedom were, are still very important to me, but I didn't realize that these things were an incomplete version of them. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that was that is a very long way of discussing my take on the uh, on the fucking can re nazis be rehabilitated or whatever drama um people fucking shut the fuck up and learn about humans please for the love of god every single person doesn't matter what your identity is i am trans and i had problematic beliefs in the past guess what every single black person in my audience you have problematic beliefs you probably have them now and you did and guess what every single le communist uh uh, communist, um, um, non-binary person in my audience, guess what? You got them too. Sorry. Everybody. We all got them. Danabo, you're going to clip that one out of context? Go for it. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Danabo? Hope you've enjoyed this segment. This has been, um, yeah, Latin. Listen, you want to know? Listen, listen, I'm, I know this is going to sound, this is going to sound like a terrible take. Do you know, when I was in the international house, do you know how much racism there was? There was a lot. It was like my, the friends that I had who were Indian, they made fun of this one Pakistani kid so much. It was ridiculous. Holy shit. There was a, one of my friends, um, International House was where I lived. It was a, uh, it was a, 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 a long story. Um, I, there was a friend I had who was Chinese, and his his parents literally told him before he goes to college, before he went to college, like while he was at school, they told him in Chinese, "If you date a black a black woman while you're here, we will disown you." They literally said that to him on campus, like around people who didn't speak Chinese. Now, you could argue about whether that was just prejudice or just racist, racism, but all I'm saying is that your identity does not protect you from problematic views. Really does not, okay? It doesn't. It really does not. It, it doesn't. Prejudice is a part of the human condition, and it is a part of the ideology of it is part of right-wing ideology. It is a part of fear-based ideologies. Now, that doesn't mean that that um, people who are marginalized don't have some level of, of 
insight from their experience. Um, like, I think I've learned a lot from being trans. I think I have a lot of insight that many cis people don't have. But it's not just because I'm trans. It's because of the experiences I've had while being trans. Yeah. It's possible. I, no, no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. It is a hard lesson to learn that. Yeah. Damn. This has been a facts-spitting stream, okay?